Did you know that many iconic bags not only owe their names but also their success to famous and inspiring women? You probably have heard about Jane Birkin and the Birkin bag, but there are also other bags where you would have never guessed that they had a celebrity godmother. I think the biggest surprise is the Louis Vuitton Speedy 25, which was created for none other than Audrey Hepburn. It initially had a different name, it was called Express and it was launched in the 1930s. And this name reflects the changes in the travel industry back then because uh, commercial travel via planes became more popular, travel became faster, so people needed new types of luggage. Louis Vuitton created this bag, which is a smaller version of its Keep All travel bag. Initially it didn't come with any logos, but soon they produced it with their signature monogram. And it was smaller, as I said, as the Keep All, so you could use it as an everyday bag and still fold it and put it in your suitcase. In the 1960s, the Speedy was available in three sizes, 30, 35 and 40, hence also the name Speedy 30, 35 and 40. In 1965, Audrey Hepburn requested a smaller version of the bag in 25 centimeters. And in the 1960s, she was already world famous. She did her movies like Roman Holiday and especially after 1961, Breakfast at Tiffany's, everybody knew Audrey Hepburn. So it was a very smart move of Louis Vuitton to produce this bag for her. And it ended up being the right decision because Audrey Hepburn ended up loving the bag. She carried it everywhere, so she helped the bag to fame. She was seen in 1965 at Heathrow Airport, for example, where she wore a coat uh, with a fur trim and knee-high boots. In 1967, she was spotted at lunch in Paris wearing a Givenchy suit and she also carried the Speedy. And in 1968, she wore a suede headscarf and matching gloves in Rome. Of course, other celebrities came along, such as Lauren Bacall and Jackie Kennedy. And speaking of Jackie Kennedy, this leads me to Gucci. Gucci also had a bag with a different name, the 50s Constance, but then Jackie Kennedy came along. I don't need to tell you, she was one of the style icons of the 1960s. She was famous for her pillbox hats and suits, but in the 1970s, she changed her style. It became more casual. It reflected her jet set life with her second husband, ship owner and tycoon Aristotle Onassis. And this bag was perfect for the style and overall the 1970s fashion trends because it was very different from the bags uh, of the 1960s. In the 1960s, the bags were these geometric shapes. They looked a bit austere. They were also a bit impractical. And this bag was in a half moon shape. It was very soft. It was easy to carry. And another reason for its popularity was uh, that there was no logo on the bag. Later on, it was also launched in a monogram canvas, but initially there was only the signature clasp and you had to be in the know. Only people who knew this bag knew it was Gucci and nobody else. So today we would say it was quite luxury and back then this was also very popular. The story or the urban legend is that Jackie Kennedy came into one of the Gucci boutiques and she left with multiple versions of this bag and she ended up carrying this bag yeah, basically anywhere. There are photos of her in her apartment, when traveling, when shopping, and this bag ended up being one of the most photographed bags of the 1970s. And because Jackie Kennedy loved this bag so much, Gucci later on renamed the Constance into Jackie in honor of her, and until today it's a very popular bag model. There were many reiterations, for example, under Tom Ford, of course, also under Frida Giannini and also in 2021 under Alessandro Michele. Let's move on to the next bag and I would actually call it royalty because it is related to a princess, Diana the Princess of Wales, and we are talking about the Lady Dior bag. The backstory is the following. The princess came to France on an official visit uh, for the opening of the Cézanne exhibition in the Grand Palais in Paris in 1995. Bernadette Chirac, the wife of the then French president Jacques Chirac, needed a gift for the princess and she called up the House of Dior and asked for a recommendation. Dior recommended the Chouchou bag. So this bag also existed before it met Princess Diana. But Dior was kind of ahead of their time. They launched the bag a year before, but somehow customers didn't really pick up on it. And then Dior, they saw the chance and said, use it as a gift for Lady Di. In their press kit, Dior then uh, said, Lady, Lady Di, Lady Dior. So they played with this whole situation. And later on, they renamed the bag from 
shoot into princess and then lady dior princess diana obviously loved this bag because there are many documented pictures of her carrying this bag over the next 12 months after that visit especially for example she uh, was seen in children's homes there was also an official visit to liverpool in 1995 where she wore this really bright orange versace costume and then she had the lady dior with her um, she also carried it at the Met Gala with a blue Dior slip dress. The initial version of this bag was designed by the then creative director Gianfranco Ferré and this bag also reflects the heritage of the house. There are these charms on the strap with the Dior letters and they reflect the passion of Christian Dior himself who collected amulets and talismans. And the quilting or stitching reflects the cane work of chairs, the Napoleon III or Louis XV chairs which were used for your runway shows and up until today it is a very popular bag and it is still made up of 130 components. And now I'd like to talk about a bag which is a bit lesser known, the Sofia bag by Ferragamo, but this bag is related to a very famous Italian actress, Sofia Loren. She was very close friends with Salvatore Ferragamo because both of them loved Naples, had a close relationship to the city because she grew up in Naples and Salvatore came to the city as a young man to learn the craft of shoemaking. They became very close friends and he also of course supplied her for her movie roles with shoes but also for her everyday wardrobe. He died in 1960 but uh, the family took over the business and because of her continuous support of the brand and her loyalty and friendship to Salvatore, uh, the company released the Sofia bag in 2009 in honor of Sofia Loren. I have talked a lot now about famous bags, but of course I can't do this video without mentioning the most famous bag, the Birkin bag. Jane Birkin was a singer and actress with British and French roots. In addition to her success in French cinema, she was also very famous for her romantic liaison with Serge Gainsbourg. He was an actor, composer, singer, songwriter from France. And you have probably heard this famous story. Jane Birkin and Jean-Louis Dumas were on the same plane. Jean-Louis Dumas was then the CEO of Hermès and he is credited with turning Hermès into a global brand. He is also the grandson of Emile Maurice Hermès, but I don't want to talk too much here about the history of the house. If you want to learn more about it, you can watch my video. And the two of them, as I said, were sitting on the plane and there are different versions of the story. One is that Birkin's bag, not the Birkin bag, fell on the ground and then all the items that she had in there fell out and then they discussed bags. The other version is that they were just simply discussing bags and she gave him recommendations and after that he created the Birkin bag. But the important part of the story is that Jane Birkin told him that she needed a more functional bag for her lifestyle and travels and he came up with the first version of the Birkin, the Birkin 40, which had rolled handles, it was made from box calf leather, it also had two feet and also a lock. And today this bag has become so famous and sought after that there's not only a wait list but you also have to build up store credit with Hermes so that they consider you eligible that you can buy this bag. This bag comes in different sizes and the prices range from 10,000 euros up until 200,000 euros or more depending on the leather or the custom specifications. If I talk about Hermes of course I also have to mention the second iconic bag which is linked to a famous woman, the Kelly bag. Also, this bag started out under a different name. It was called Sac à Dépêche, which is nothing that special. It was launched in the 1930s uh, under Robert Dumas, who is the father of Jean-Louis, who I just mentioned. And he created a smaller version of the very first bag of Hermès, the Haute Courroie, uh, the HAC bag. And this bag was then bigger than most of the bags that were available at the time. And it allowed women to put more items into the bag and hence also more freedom. Also, it came with the signature straps and the clasp, and this became a blueprint for many future MS designs. Even the Birkin bag has uh, similarities with this Kelly bag. And what is very interesting, today we know it as Kelly bag, but it actually took a very long time from the first time that Grace Kelly carried the bag until it was actually named Kelly bag in the 1970s. The first time that Grace Kelly met her Sac à Dépêche or her Kelly bag was on the film set of To Catch a Thief by Alfred Hitchcock because Hermès supplied them with accessories and then she was seen carrying this bag. And even later on, after marrying uh, Renier and becoming the Princess of Monaco, she frequently carried this bag. And the most famous picture probably, and even Hermès themselves, refer to a picture from 1956 
was when she stepped out in front of the paparazzi and she held the bag to shield her baby bump. And these pictures turned a relatively unknown Sacca Depeche into a global phenomenon until today. And Grace Kelly throughout her life, she was very loyal to MS. She also loved the silk scarves, as I mentioned in my other video. And uh, you could actually see a proof of her loyalty to the Kelly bag in 2010 at the Victoria and Albert Museum because there was a bag displayed where you could see the scratches. And to honor her loyalty, the brand then changed the name from Saka Depeche into Kelly bag in 1977. And it does not always have to be an ultra famous celebrity who was the inspiration behind an iconic bag. In the case of Ralph Lauren, it was his wife Ricky, who he met in 1964 and married soon afterwards. And during their 60 year long marriage, she has been his muse. And she was also the inspiration behind his Ricky bag, because this bag reflects her personal clothing style. She is known for mixing classic elements, menswear, and also elements from outdoor sports, for example, equestrian elements. And this bag comes with a signature lock with Ralph Lauren engraved, and it has been very popular. There were many different versions of it, and it has also been turned into different types of accessories, such as clutches and wallets, for example. This was my video about iconic bags and the women behind them. If you enjoyed this video, you can read more on thepinklookbook.com, and I'm sure you also like my video about the history of the Prada nylon bag. Thank you very much and see you soon!